Given the functions f at x equals 1 over x squared minus 15x plus 50, and g of x is equal to 2 over x squared minus 10x, determine the equation of f minus g at x, state the domain of f minus g at x. All right, so we're going to go f minus g. All right, so um, we're going to go f at x. minus g at x. I'll color code things at the beginning, but then um, I'll likely get lazy and stop. I'm just being honest here. I'll eventually just stick with one color. <laughs> All right, um, what's f at x? f at x is one over x squared minus 15x plus 50 minus g at x, which is 2 over x squared minus 10x. All right, now this is a math 20 concept where we're subtracting rational expressions. What you want to do is come up with a common denominator. To do so, we're going to have to factor first, okay? So the first function, f at x, I can factor the denominator by doing inspection. So two numbers that add up to negative 15 and multiply to 50 would be x minus 10, x minus 5, minus... In the second fraction, um, we can GCF the denominator. We can take out a 2. I meant x, not a 2. Take out an x from the denominator, and you get x times x minus 10. All right, so here's where I'm going to get lazy, guys. I'm um, just going to use one color. Um, <laughs> What is your common denominator? What is your LCD? What is your lowest common denominator? Well, it's going to be x, x minus 10, and x minus 5. So basically, you just take all the unique factors in your denominator, and if you multiply those together, you get your LCD. All right, so LCD is going to be x times x minus 10 times x minus 5. All right, and now you just got to figure out what you need to multiply each fraction by, both top and bottom, so that you get that LCD. All right, so for the first fraction that I have in blue, the f at x, I've got the x minus 10, I've got the x minus 5, I'm just missing the x. So that means I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. So x times 1 gives me x. For the second um, fraction, what are we missing in the denominator? Well, we got the x, we got the x minus 10, I'm just missing the x minus 5. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 5. Okay, so we're going to get minus 2 times x minus 5. All right, um, I'm going to expand the brackets in the numerator. So we're don't forget to expand out the negative as well. So it's going to be x minus 2x plus 10 all over the LCD, x times x minus 10 times x minus 5. Let's collect some like terms. Uh, we get negative x plus 10 all over x x minus 10, x minus 5. All right, you're probably like, yay, we're done. Sucker, you're not done. Uh, 
I can get aggressive. Um, what else can we do in the numerator? In the numerator, I can actually factor out a negative one. And then you're going to have X minus 10 left. Now you're probably thinking, why would she do that? Look at what math magic happens when you can factor that negative one out. When I factor that negative one out, do you guys see how the X minus tens cancel out? So that means we've simplified it as best we can. So numerator, let's leave the negative one. In the denominator, we'd have X times X minus five. And there you have the difference function for f minus g. Okay, um, we just need the domain. Okay, so what's the domain of f minus g? Well, you basically want to look at what's ever been in the denominator's position. Okay, so we've got um, x. So x can't equal zero. That was in the denominator. X minus five can't equal zero because that was in the denominator. As was x minus 10. I know the x minus 10s were canceled out. It doesn't matter. If at one time it was in the denominator's position, it acts as an NPV or a non-permissible value, and those automatically affect your domain. Okay, so domain is x cannot equal 0, it cannot equal 5, and it cannot equal 10. Okay, why 5 and 10? Because if x minus 5 can't equal 0, x can't equal 5. If x minus 10 can't equal 0, then x can't equal 10. So your domain is just going to be x can't equal 0, 5, and 10, but it could be all the other real numbers.